Ladies and gentlemen, today is August 18th, 2012, and this is the k and Kale Show, episode 47. I am your humble host, Keenan Lafferty. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to present not only your portfolio, but yourself when you are doing a portfolio review at a gaming convention or an art convention, whatever, Comic-Con, PAX, all that stuff. Basically, um... For those of you who know, last week I was attending a Massive Black workshop in San Francisco, which was awesome. And I had the genuine opportunity of sitting down to do portfolio reviews. Like, I was the one reviewing these people's portfolios. And I took some handy notes of things that I loved and things that I didn't like so much. And I want to pass that knowledge down to you, and hopefully it will help you out when you get the chance to present your portfolio. But... Before we get into that, we are going to look at the lovely Lane come to us. So, thank you for those of you who have been continuing to submit your awesome artwork to the Facebook. Uh, we haven't looked at this in like two weeks, so uh, I kind of forget where we left off. So I'm just going to kind of scroll up and so everybody can see all the awesome artwork. We got mermaids, we got lovely ladies, we got comics, we got little post-apocalyptic girls. Mmm, I like that. Horsies! My roommate would approve. Jokers, man, this is so cool. I love the style of the zigs. This is so great. Mmm, sexy Zyra. Mmm, mmm. Look at this. This is so cute. Oh, I love this. Please submit more of this. And then whoever uh, sent in this video of me at work, I didn't even know they put this thing together, but uh, thank you for uh, showing me that, as well as um, highlighting the half a second that I'm actually in it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the best half second out of the whole film, so... You guys should definitely check that out if you'd like to see what my everyday life is like at work. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's eye-opening. The Twitter. Please subscribe if you are not subscribe. It's follow. Follow on Twitter if you would like me to bug you when I am posting new episodes and I can keep you updated as to what is going on. However, I will not post when I am eating grass or cow tipping at the local farm because there are none around this area. But if there were might just be doing that. So, onward we go. Let's close this out. Uh, okay, so I am going to be, actually, today I'm just going to be doodling uh, my character, Emma. In the last daily, you saw me kind of, uh, what's the word, simplifying her shapes. And um, today I'm basically going to just be doodling as well as going over the notes. So... Without further ado, we shall get this started. Actually, I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger since this daily is a little bit more about me talking and not so much about the art. The art is just in the background, so you can watch and not get bored. All right. Let us begin. Oh. I just recently had a bunch of stuff moved around. I think my monitors got all out of whack. All right, but no matter. Onward we go. Okay, so one of the first, I will be consulting my handy little sketch pad slash notebook while we are doing this. And uh, here we go. Okay, so one of the first things that I noticed in, when I was sitting down to do my review was A, that I had never done this before. And it's actually kind of interesting. Like, I was almost just as nervous as the people that were coming in to show their portfolios. And I'm guessing there's still a little bit of that each time you do portfolio reviews because let's face it it's two strangers coming together right and they're artists artists have very very fragile egos and we all know this and so you know you're meeting a stranger for the first time you're both gonna be a little bit nervous so take that first into account and that leads me to my first note which is uh, be kind sit up confidently and lean in only a little if any at all. Okay, so this this comes down to posture and a lot of body language. A lot of people have always talked about talked about how your body language says like ninety percent of it, and your mouth says the other ten percent, right? So if you come in, if you come in and you, and you sit down and you're like slouching in your chair and you look all lazy, you know, or you don't look like excited about it, then you know there people are gonna make. Um, kind of judgment calls about you within the first few seconds, you know? It's, it's unfortunate, but that's kind of what we do. You know, it's just kind of human nature. So what you want to do is um, you want to make sure you're being kind with your language, um, just the way that you present yourself. You want to sit up straight and confidently. And if you lean in, 
Like, this is a really good way to see if they're engaged with you. If you lean in just a tiny bit, not like this, not like, don't get in their face, but like if you just lean in a tiny bit, or if they lean in towards you, that's like a good sign. That, that means that they're engaged and they, I don't know, it's like a body language thing. They just want to, they feel engaged with you and they want to get closer. So, they want to get closer to you. <laughs> so, um, leaning in is actually kind of nice. I mean, it, you just kind of place your hands on the table, or like, here, I'll show you. You kind of just, you kind of just place your, your hands on the table like this. You don't, you don't want to do this. This is a little bit too much, and you can see my, my shaving nick I got there. Mmm, that's nice. <laughs> oh, the funny thing about this, um, I was going to, <laughs> I was going to present this today, right? And I sat down, and I had just woken up, and I hadn't shaved in a week, so I was all scruffy and greasy and dirty looking, and I was like, I'm going to be giving a presentation today on how to properly present yourself. <laughs> I look like a slob. I should probably go uh, take a shower and shave. So that's kind of what that is. <laughs> so that is the first one. And that leads me to my next note. That is uh, be clean, right? Be clean. Be showered. Brush your, te brush your teeth. No bad language, okay? And just, just don't do that because, uh, again, nobody wants to talk to somebody who's like smelly or unkempt or ratty hair. You know, it's like, it's it's a big thing, man. It's almost you want to think of it as um, these people are looking at you as possible coworkers, right? Like that's really one of the biggest things I notice is portfolio review. They call it that, right? They call it that, and it makes you think it's like, oh, well, they're just looking at my portfolio, but it's actually way more than that. They're looking at these things and they're they're thinking whether or not they would want you on their team. That's exactly what we were thinking. You know, back when. Uh, when we were doing the portfolio reviews for Riot, right, at Massive Black. So, uh, yeah, always just keep that in mind. Like, people are looking at you in a way, like, much more than you think they are. They're, they're, they're asking themselves, wow, this person, like, say you come in, you're, you're clean, you're well kept, you look confident, you sit down, and you're, you're sweet and nice and awesome, and not to mention your art is awesome, which obviously it will be, you know, when you're presenting your portfolio. I mean, they'll give you feedback as far as things that they'll want to see improve, and that, that should always be taken into uh, great consideration and, and with great gratitude because that's the other thing is it's not easy giving feedback to people. You know, it's it's something that it's a big part of the professional art, artist world, and yet they don't teach you it in art school. They don't teach you how to talk to other artists, and it's actually one of the, one of the most complicated things. Well, actually, it's not... It's simple, but it's tactful. You know what I mean? Like you can't just go up to people and say, "Oh, this sucks, change it." You know, there's a way that. And when you give feedback, say, "Hey, I want you to do this." You know, just like like a lot of people can just take that as you coming in and like crapping all over their work and being like, "Oh yeah, by the way, you should do this because it'll be better." Thanks, and then you walk away. You know, we call that seagulling. You know, because seagulls fly over and they crap on you. So <laughs> you don't want to be a seagull. Okay. Anyway, so um. <laughs> the next one is be be coherent. <laughs> this is good. I was literally writing this down as this one guy came in and he he sat down at the table. I swear this guy must have had something to drink before he came in, because he comes in and he's like he sits down on the chair. And he's like he's like this, and he's like that, and and like oh before he even sits down, he takes out his iPad from his uh, thing. I know this isn't an iPad, but um, he takes out his iPad from his. Uh, from his freaking from his backpack, right? And I'm I'm doing this so it can be a prop, right? So this is an iPad, right? He takes out his iPad, comes in, and he just whips it out and just like throws it on the desk. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, whoa, hey, how's it going? You know? <laughs> and he sits down, and he's like, oh. oh, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, I just I just wanted some like review on my portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Could you could you take a look? I was like, uh, yeah, sure. Right? So I started looking through this guy's stuff, right? And I was like, wow, you're actually really good. But the part that sucks the most about this guy was he was like, he was so like, uh, he, he was like arrogant and he was really like annoying because um, one of my coworkers, Katie DeSouza, was sitting next to me. She's a girl, right? And he's totally just like flapping his gums and uh, 
freaking just he's talking all the time he's leading us through his portfolio right he's not allowing us to talk but then on top of that his language was absolutely terrible like he was cursing like every other freaking word so it really sucks and honestly like as soon as that started happening it's like I, I don't care what kind of art you do I don't care how good you are it's like I would never want to have you working with me you know because you're just not a cool person you're not a nice person to work with so I cannot stress enough that it's important that you maintain your confidence and your respect not only for yourself but for others you know make sure that you're you're being nice I mean I understand you being personable right you shouldn't like be really like if cursing I guess is part of your normal thing you know don't don't feel like you have to necessarily change yourself completely but you know just keep in mind you need to respect people you know because you don't know how they're gonna respond to that okay uh, next thing I wrote down was do not complain about anything that no excuses like if you're a freelancer or something right and you're showing off your work uh, this one guy sat down and he's like oh yeah um, I did this but um, yeah they were really unclear with what they wanted so it, it could have been better they, they should have just gone with what I wanted you know, and and it would have just been it would have been great. You know, like people don't want to hear that. That's actually you might think that you're kind of standing up for yourself and making yourself look good by doing that, but you're actually showing that you just like to make excuses and blame others for when things don't go your way, right? And that's a big red flag in the industry because we can't have that. We do, we don't like to work with people like that. Like if something happens beyond your control or there's changes made and it's not exactly what you wanted it to be then you need to just again you need to swallow that pill and get over it you know and just do what you're supposed to do and just make the best of it you know nobody wants to hear your complaints and excuses okay so no babies no babies let's see okay another thing um better to have too much than too little especially if you're good Right, so um, there was this one guy that came in, and and this is speak, like, speaking specifically with portfolios, right? This one guy came in, and he was showing his stuff, right? And he was he was pretty good, right? But he only had like five things, and that is a little bit concerning because you don't get a, a real feel for how much you've done. It's like you've chosen five pieces of your work to show. It's like what what does the rest of your stuff look like? Stuff that you wouldn't want to show. You know, so make sure that you have a good balance, um, and I think that a good balance for like showing um, stuff in your <laughs> portfolio. I had about fifteen to twenty pieces in mine when I came, um, but this one guy that came in, he was great, and he literally had like fifty pieces. Like I was like, I was just looking through his iPad, and I was like, when does this end? It's just like it doesn't end. There's so many awesome things. So if you have a lot of pieces that you're proud of, like don't don't ever feel like you you have too many. However, you should always put your best ones at the very very start because that is the first thing they're going to see and again we are creatures of judgment and we will form opinions about you very early on but i'm telling you this that way you can use it to your advantage you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying all right moving on to the next one on to the next one uh show your process okay this is another very important thing this kind of goes with what i said before I wonder how long we've been going. Feels like it's been like 15 minutes. This might actually be a little bit longer of a of a show, and and I'm okay with that because uh, this is really important, and I want you guys to to get this. Okay, so show your process. This is important because if you just show a bunch of finished pieces, oftentimes, especially with comic book artists, um, uh, one thing I've noticed is they, they they'll do the lines right, but then oftentimes they have another artist that does the ink and another artist that does the color so you're seeing the finished piece right but you, that's not necessarily what that artist did so I think it's always important to show your process show exactly what you did not only just the sketches but like the pencil work or if it's a cool idea for like an armor set that you've come up with show the final but then also show all the awesome research and reference and, and things that you looked into to get to that point and that's very very impressive because it shows that you're a thinker and that you are creative and we love people like that so always be sure don't don't shortchange yourself by only showing your your finished work you know it's almost it, it's almost like um, if you were looking through a photo album and you just you took a picture of yourself at the top of Mount Everest right 
But you didn't have any of the pictures of you climbing there, you know, or any of the freaking like, hey, you had to nail the sleeping bag to the side of the mountain and then sleep there, right? Or set up in, you know, some freaking weird cave and, and snuggle with a bear to stay warm. You know, if you don't have pictures of that, then, um, yeah, it's just not, it's not as fun. You know, it's like going to the end of the movie without seeing the rest of it. So be sure to show that because we really, really, really like that. Moving on. Um, okay, uh, I wrote down the reviewers can be just as nervous as you. And I noticed this because I was like, wow, I actually, I'm nervous meeting these people. And it really just comes down to, it's just, it's two strangers coming together, right? And, and talking. It's never the most um, comfortable comforting thing, comfortable, comforting, whatever, both of those work. It's never the most comforting thing, you know, so kind of keep that in mind. Like, you may be nervous, but realize the other person on the other end of the table is nervous too, you know. So uh, just just be friendly and be nice, and you'll find out that the, the tension will be quickly alleviated. All right. Um... Well dressed. Oh yes. Okay. I cannot tell you how amazed I am when people come in and they're well dressed. Right. Again, I, I put on. This is one of my favorite shirts, so I wanted to make sure I'm leading by example. Right. <laughs> and uh, this one guy came in. Oh, he looked really awesome. He was uh, dressed in like this purple button-down shirt with a black vest, um, black pants, and dress shoes on. Right. And he looked he looked artistic, but he was also just like really dressed up, and it was really awesome. And what this does is it shows people that you care, right? It shows people that you care about what you look like. And it's actually a form of, um, at least the way I looked at it, is it's respect. You know, you're, you're getting yourself ready to, and looking nice for these people that you really respect what they're going to say about your portfolio. So again, this is doing nothing but adding to your advantage of what we think of you within those first, you know, few vital seconds. Because again, I mean, it's not that we necessarily like intend to do it either we don't intend to be judgmental it's just the fact that when you look through I mean, we must have looked through I don't know probably a hundred people's portfolios that day and um, the whole team me alone I probably looked through I don't know maybe like 15 20 I don't know I kind of lost count but after you know doing a few of them like you just want you you get the artist that comes in and, and is kind of like he's all nervous or he's kind of you know not exactly showered or a little greasy and you know, I can understand that right but you know but it's it's really nice and refreshing to have somebody who you can see that they've got it all kind of under control um, they're prepared and they're dressed up nicely and it's really it's just kind of a nice break and it always feels very very good when they take the time to present themselves that way so. Or maybe I'm just shallow. I don't know. But <laughs> if you be, if you see me at a review portfolio table, you better be dressed up. You better be looking good. You better be looking handsome or fine. Because if not, I'll be like, nope. Next, please. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that to you. I love you guys. I love all artists, no matter how they they come in all shapes and sizes, and I'm fine with that. But I'm just merely saying what I think will help you guys out. Uh, these eyes are a little space too far apart. Let's fix that. Yes! Okay. Moving on. Okay. Avoiding your nervous tics. Okay, this is another very important one. Again, remember, the other person on the other end of the table is just as nervous as you. So, um, one thing I've noticed is sometimes people will, just whatever your nervous tic is, if it's grabbing your ear or touching your nose or doing this. I mean, I do this sometimes, actually. So, it's good to kind of just stay away from your nervous tics. Uh, there was one guy that um, even something as simple as going like this, right? Just like constantly moving, moving like that, right? Like your hands on the table, but it's like constantly just like moving like that. It's a nervous tick or like twirling your hair. That would be funny if you sat down and you were just doing this the whole time. That's funny. That actually used to be mine back when I was in, uh, in grade school. I used to twirl my hair all the time. So avoid your nervous tics. Be confident. Be Basically, even if you are nervous, do, don't show it. You know, just uh, act the part. Because amazingly, I have stood up and I've given big presentations and I have been nervous to the max, right? But I decided that I was going to try my best to not show it, right? And at the end of that, at the end of the presentation, people came up to me and they're like, "How did you do that? You look so confident up there." And it just it blew my mind because I was nowhere near feeling confident, and I was so nervous, but I sort of tricked myself and said I wasn't going to show it. 
So do that. Okay, um, if you want to talk with a company, right, be familiar with their product because, okay, so many people sat down for their portfolio reviews and they are possibly interested in work, right? Or we were interested in giving them work, right? Like most of the time when you sit down at a portfolio review and you show awesome stuff, they're going to be interested in contacting you, right? So keep that in mind. This is actually a big opportunity. I didn't even realize how big of an opportunity this was, especially for, for Riot at least. I don't know how Blizzard or Valve and those guys do it. But for Riot, man, like you got good stuff, we're, we are willing to give you a shot. So, um, and the best thing, like, okay, so we're willing to give somebody a shot, but the biggest turnoff is when we say, man, this is awesome. Would you be interested in doing um, freelance work, right? And they're like, yeah, this is awesome. Um, or they're like, yeah, that would be awesome. And then we ask them, so um, are you familiar with League of Legends? And they say, no. <laughs> and at that point, we're just like, yeah. Well, here you go. Here's a pack Sivir. Why don't you go? Why don't you go play and have some fun? <laughs> so yeah, if you're going to be getting a portfolio review, definitely be familiar with the the company's products. And with that, on that note, gear your portfolio towards if you can. Again, like this isn't saying you need to change everything, but if possible, if there is a company you're shooting for, gear your portfolio towards that company. Like if you want to do concept art for Valve, then maybe you should have drawing sketches and studies of Team Fortress 2 characters or the machines from Half-Life, you know, stuff like that that'll get them interested and be like, oh, hey, this person is familiar with our product and, and likes what we do. Maybe we should contact him for some freelance work. Have good questions ready and be ready to let your reviewers talk as well. Don't lead the whole conversation. Okay, this is another thing. You lay down your portfolio, right? You're flipping through it, flipping through it, right? Don't like give them the storybook thing and be like, oh, and this is when I did it. Okay, next one. Turn the page. And this is when I was working for this company. Turn the page. And then, you know, don't do that. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're balancing the conversation. And this is another good way to gauge how interested they are. Because if they're talking back to you and they're interested in what you're doing, which most of the time they will be, um, then uh, it's very invaluable for you to let them talk. Let them flap their gums. Let them get the freaking words out of their mouth because they want to. If you keep cutting them off and leading them down the path, they're going to be like, man, this person just doesn't, this person's controlling. Man, get them out of here. And you don't want that. Okay, moving on. Okay, be kind. I said be kind, right? But do not be fake kind. I do not like people that are kind for the sake of being kind, and you can tell they just have like this smile, you know? And you can see right through their face when they're talking to you. And I don't like that. I call that the Olive Garden manager nice, because that is exactly how the managers at Olive Garden are. They're that fake nice. They smile at you, but they're smiling through their teeth. And it really sucks. And I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it's just like, if you're going to be nice, just be genuinely nice. Don't, don't be all like trying to brown nose and, you know, like trying to, trying to get your way in just by like acting like you're a cool guy you know, or acting like you're a nice person. And that's kind of like, I don't know if it's, it's not really something I can like give a lot of input on because it's just something that you feel, you know, like people can sense it. It's that sixth sense, right? And if you have that fake nice thing, for me, it just reminds me of working at Olive Garden. And that is not a feeling that I want to associate with you. So, <laughs> you best be leaving that crap at the door. Moving on. A good amount of time, okay, a good amount of time for your portfolio review can be, be between a minute and a half to three minutes. Like, you don't have to worry about taking up a lot of time, like, especially if they seem engaged. Don't ever say, oh man, um, like if there's a big line behind you, don't ever be like, oh man, I feel bad, like I'm taking up so much time. Well, you can say that. You can say that to show that, you know, you're being conscientious of the people behind you, which is nice, right? But don't ever feel like you need to rush because of the people that are waiting behind you, right? You waited for your turn, right? And you're showing some awesome work. They're engaged. They like it. You deserve the time, right? So it's good to be aware of it. 
But um, I mean, don't freaking hog it either. Don't don't stay there if they're not engaged. You know what I mean? Like, if they're not, it's fine, right? Like, don't take it as a bad thing. Like, you are going to go in portfolio reviews where they're just not gonna like your stuff, right? I've done it before, right? You just gotta understand that just some people either aren't looking for it or they're just there to, you know, like the company's paid for them to be there and they don't really want to be there. So, and there's a lot of things that can go into it, but don't ever take it too personally. And I think that's the most important thing. All right, moving on. The best question you can ask is, what can I improve upon? Okay, this is really good. Okay, I know it's called a portfolio review, and they're supposed to give you feedback, right? But, again, this goes back to the whole, they're just as nervous as you are. So if you prompt that by saying, what do you think I could improve upon? Like, Or say I wanted to work for a company like you guys. What would you guys like to see you know, from me? Having saying that question, I think, is one of the best questions, and I loved it when people said that because it totally opens the door, and there's not that weird feeling of like, okay, let me give you some feedback, you know, the guy on the other t table, you know, like me saying that, and I don't have to feel like a butthead <laughs> for um, lack of a better term for giving feedback, right? So if you prompt it and open the door by saying, what can I improve upon, or what would you like to see? You know, if, if I were to work for a company like this one day, uh, that is one of the best questions you can ask, and I highly recommend that you uh, have that one ready. Moving on, um, we got a few more, and then we are going to wrap up this daily. Let's see if I can crank out one more simplified version of Emma, really quick. Let's move this over here. I've actually been simplifying her shapes quite a bit. I'm trying to get to the point where. Um, I can not only draw her really fast, but also I want her her shapes to be kind of more iconic and graphic looking. She's she's gonna be cool. I'm really excited for this. Okay, but on to the last few questions. Uh, business cards are awesome, right? Most of Okay, business cards are awesome, right? You should always have a business card or a lead behind as they call them nowadays. Um, business cards are awesome and it allows us to remember who you are so making it unique is probably one of the best things that you can do always have a picture of your work on it preferably one of your most favorite pieces of work um, there's a place called moo.com moo like a cow right um, I've had a lot of people recommend that site for printing cards because it's it's affordable and you don't need to get like 5,000 of them printed you know in order to like have it be relatively cheap so Moo.com is a great place to go for business cards. They do great customizable. There's like good density. Do not print out your cards on, do not get those things from Office Max with the little perforated edges and print it out. Do not get those because those are just, those are cheap and I don't even know why they make those. Those are cheap and crappy. I mean, I mean don't get me wrong. I mean, I've used them before so I can say that they suck. And they're just, they're really dumb and they seem flimsy and cheap and you don't want to be associated with that type of thing. So make sure that your leave behind is unique and something we can remember you by because that's going in their bag or it's going, you know, on their phone if they take a picture of it or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. But you know what I mean? It, it's going to stay with them. And when they look at it again, they're going to recall everything that they talked about with you and they're going to say, wow, this person was a badass artist and we should contact him and give him lots of money. That looks a little, a little scary. I think I made her eyes a little bit low on this one. Whoops. Oh, well. Moving on. Okay, be honest. Uh, being honest is awesome. I, I love being honest. <laughs> and when artists are, are honest with you, if you ask them, well, what are you doing right now? Are you, are you going to school? Or are you working? You know, like just be honest about where you're at and what you're doing. You don't need to be like, oh yeah, I'm working for this uh, big company over here, and oh yeah, this other place is offering me this much money. But yeah, I just I turn them away because you know I'm busy. You know, don't be like that. Be honest. <laughs> it makes you endearing, and people like that. Okay, here's another cool thing. Speaking of le uh, leaving behind business cards, um, if it's a company, you don't have to do this with every review that you go to. But if it's a company that you're really interested in going to, if you draw a picture. If you draw a hand-drawn picture on that card and then you give it to them, oh man, like they're not gonna forget that and they're going to love it because it's a it's one of a kind, you know, it's collectible. Everybody loves that stuff. 
And they're going to remember that. They're going to be like, oh, well, how many people drew on their business cards and then handed them to me? Not many, because not as many people are as cool as you are. So always remember, keep, keep yourself unique and allow yourself to stand out. And it will come back and pay you the big bucks. Uh, differentiate yourself with your portfolio and your sketchbook. There were some awesome sketchbooks there. There was this one guy literally made a sketchbook. It was like massive papers, right? And then he created this like leather bound tome with metal embossments on it. And it was like all sewn together. And it was awesome looking. And then on top of that, when I opened that thing up, he was an awesome artist. So I was like, this is cool. I mean, granted, your portfolio, or, I mean, your sketchbooks don't all have to look like that. But Having a little bit of like a unique spin on your presentation, definitely, again, it, it sets you apart from all the other artists. So always be thinking about unique little things that you can do. All right, moving on to the final question, I believe. Yes, this is the final question. When we give feedback, write it down. Write it down. We don't care where you write it. You can write it on your hand, your foot, your head, your face, and I don't care where you write it. Preferably on a piece of paper, though. Write it down, because that means that you care about what we are saying, and again, it makes us like you. And the biggest thing that I'm starting to notice about the art world is it's actually a lot smaller than you think it is. You'll run into artists that you look looked that you looked up to as a kid, right? And you'll just, you'll run into them at like a convention. You'll run into it. You'll work with them one day, like this guy, uh, Paul Kwan, Sh Shiramoon, right? I used to watch him on DeviantArt, and he absolutely blew my mind. Like I was like, I want to be like that guy one day. And now today, he's working literally two desks down from me. I literally look over him and wave at him. So it's like you'd be amazed at how small the art world is. And if you leave behind a good impression with a portfolio reviewer or a company. You will pro if you keep at it, I'd say it's a very good possibility you are going to run into them again. And if they remember you, you're already leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else that is going to be in that line that day because you're a familiar face and it's no longer a stranger that they're talking to. They're talking to somebody that they like. They're talking to a friend. And I guarantee you, if you do that, if you leave good impressions and you show respect and you take down that feedback, you there is absolutely no way that you cannot make it to where you want to go, no matter where you want to work. So that is my closing statement, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm just going to finish up this little Emma here. There we go. It's not bad, not bad. Still working on her. Still working on her. I think I'm going to be able to get this thing down here, though. I like that. Oh, here, let me show you. Before we conclude, let me show you kind of what I do with the, the treatment of the hair. Actually, go back in. I'll erase all of these lines and see the hair actually becomes this really cool graphic shape. Graphical shape. Oh yeah, and I'm deciding I'm putting the hairpin back in. I like it. So it's going back in. Alrighty then. Woo! It is hot in here. I, I cannot wait until it starts cooling off down here in Southern California. But today I'm going to enjoy it because I'm going to Venice Beach and I'm going to relax and look at all the crazy people, especially that guy with the rollerblades and the electric guitar. Um, if I see him, I will get a video and I'll post it up later because that guy is awesome and the whole world needs to see that man. And he will probably be there today. So I'm going to go do that with my friend and then I'm going to get some amazing fish tacos from the restaurant featured in I Love You Man. I don't know if you guys saw that movie, but um, the fish taco place is actually on Venice. And I've always wanted to go there. So today is the day. Whoa, let's get that out of there. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, you guys have a good... Oh, no. Oh, no. I think I, I, think I just showed some bad stuff. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> oh man. For those of you guys are gonna go back and you're gonna pause that and you're gonna see some stuff. Oh. Woo boy. Um I don't know what to do about that. I might have to actually just go back and edit that. Oh shoot. Okay. Well, whatever. It's all good. I'll take care of that 
for now, you guys have a good rest of the week. I'll post up that video if I see that man in the rollerblades. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Thank you for joining me. I am Keenan Lafferty of the K&Kale Show, and this has been episode 47. I will see you guys next week.